Okay, so uh, let us begin. So uh, some people are missing, but uh, okay. Let us just start and they will eventually join, I guess. So today um, we will continue our discussion on linear systems. And uh, in the last class, I uh, believe that uh, the idea of how to draw uh, those for 2D systems uh, was explained in detail. And I hope that you understood it well, right? That how to uh, draw these phase trajectories, how to decide that if I start at time equal to zero, if I start at a certain point, x0 y0 in the in the phase plane then uh, how do i move with time and uh, how do i reach or move away from a fixed point and how many different ways i can do that okay so today uh, continuing our discussion in the in the same line uh, we will uh, solve some problems and try to uh, figure out a, a more concrete general way to uh, to understand these different architectures, different uh, dynamical varieties that we saw in the last class. So today we'll mostly solve problems and try to figure out a general rule, some thumb rules uh, for us so that we can uh, solve these problems, handle these linear systems uh, easily. And so I, I, I guess you can see my screen now, right? So uh, we, we, we discussed about this kind of different dynamical uh, varieties that you can find so uh, let us just quickly remind uh, ourselves the names. So this was a stable node, right? And uh, this is also a stable node. And this is a stable node of a special kind, which we called star, right? So uh, these names uh, we have to remember because this is how we categorize different stabilities, different stability conditions in two variable systems. So this is a stable node. This is not the stable node, but the uh, way of convergence to the stable node from different directions uh, is a little bit different. Though the trajectories converge to the same point, the way of convergence uh, is different depending on uh, the values of lambda 1 and lambda 2 of the system. So we'll talk more about that uh, today. But you uh, have seen that how changing the values of eigen, uh, the eigen uh, directions we can have these uh, different curvatures of uh, our um, trajectories. And he, this was a very special case. This is also a node, but we call it a star because here both the eigendirections were uh, very uh, equivalently. There is no fast or slow direction. Both of them are equivalently varying. Uh, so uh, we solved, we arrived at this, this, this uh, problems with a very simple uncoupled um, uh, set of equations, but today we will move on to discuss a very general formalism. And this was our uh, most uh, special uh, case where we, uh, for which we discussed with a specific example in the last class, Saddle. So um, Saddle, as we discussed that uh, here you had um, uh, an unstable condition uh, where uh, the trajectories, whichever we tried to draw, if you remember, we, we were drawing those curves in Excel and you saw that how these lines uh, continuously diverged out of uh, the, the origin, right? But here I want to draw your notice to a certain very special line, okay? So this, uh, this line will be uh, this y-axis in, in this particular figure. So just remember your... Uh, uh, the, remember the problem that we have solved before and considered a saddle. So uh, consider uh, the saddle to be a two-dimensional two plane. Okay, and there we saw that there is a very special direction, a very special direction where uh, the system as if walks on a tight rope. Okay, so you have uh, seen uh, this uh, in circus, uh, these people wa walk on a very tight rope from one side to other. And this is one kind of that kind of uh, tight rope on which if the system works, then it can reach uh, the origin. This is the only way to reach the origin, okay? So this uh, is a very special line. Uh, the y-axis in this particular case is a very special line, which along which, though the system is unstable everywhere, the system is not being able to approach this uh, origin and it is diverging from it from, from every other direction. This is one direction through which it can approach this uh, 
point and the, along this line and only this line the system behaves as if it's a stable system it's not unstable it's a stable system it's attracting the trajectories towards itself okay so this is a very special line that we have and we uh, are now trying to change the system generalize the system uh, having these coupling terms in my into my system and see that how this these diagrams change and uh, what will happen to these very special straight lines that we have here um, if i move on to a system which is coupled and we will uh, start uh, our discussion from the um, perspective of eigen values and eigen vectors which we discussed a little bit in our last class right so in in any two variable system there would be two directions which we call eigen directions we can figure it out by finding out the eigen values and the corresponding eigen vectors and today in detail we will discuss that how we can um, decide about the existing stabilities or uh, categorize between different uh, dynamical behaviors that we can see in a linear system and depending on the uh, different values or uh, different kinds of values of uh, our eigen vectors and eigen values so let us start our discussion so in this case you have to imagine that uh, we have a matrix uh, x y x and y a column matrix which is evolving with time and i have denoted that with uh, at a time dependent uh, matrix which is xt so at each and every uh, point in time we will have a different pair of x and y so you saw that how we generated that pair of x and y in our last class so just assume that this matrix is basically at different time states a pair of x and y values which is which denotes the current value of x and y and uh, this this dynamics is being controlled by an exponential uh, exponentially decaying or exponentially uh, blowing up uh, ex uh, function associated with the vector the initial uh, initial vector that we had initial position that we have okay so either it comes down and drops down to zero it blows up exponentially and goes away from it so it varies with as if Uh, lambda times t to the power lambda times t and a function like that okay so to solve this problem what we do is we we extract uh, the matrix a from our dynamical set of equations and we diagonalize it we try to figure out what are the lambda 1 and lambda 2 values so that we can only focus on the eigen directions and solve the problem so here the only thing to understand is the rest of it is already known to you so i am not going into detail for that but the only thing that i want to uh, want you to focus on is that the trajectory is either come down um, converging exponentially because it's x to the power lambda t or it comes down uh, comes uh, goes away uh, diverging exponentially from the point where it starts okay so uh, to uh, have a general 2 cross 2 matrix a b c d um, we will uh, figure out the Mm. Yeah, eigen value and eigen vector, and for that we have to write down the characteristic equation. You know that, right? So then I will extend, uh, expand that characteristic equation to figure out what is my lambda one and lambda two. Here I have written lambda one and lambda two in terms of the trace and the determinant, which is also a common form. Uh, in in some books you have already seen it. So I have just written the the uh, values uh, that we we are going to figure out for lambda 1 and lambda 2 dip, uh, dependent on uh, the trace of this matrix a that is a plus d and the determinant of the matrix a that is ad minus bc okay you will see that why this is uh, why we are uh, choosing this particular way of representing lambda 1 and lambda 2 because from here you can easily categorize uh, that it will be positive or negative or zero or uh, complex okay so this is the simplest uh, representation from which we can do that and we can only look at the matrix a we can see that what is uh, its trace what is its determinant and from there you can conclude that uh, they will be positive negative zero or complex okay so we, that is why we are choosing this special form form where we are representing it uh, in terms of uh, trace and determinant so uh, this is my lambda 1 and this is my lambda 2 these are the solutions of uh, this equation and these are the eigen values okay so 
what is the recipe what is the formula that we are going to follow so let us just 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 similar to how you uh, just uh, noted down that that how to draw the potential how to figure out the fixed point how to de de determine the bifurcations just like that this is the recipe of dealing with linear system so let us just go through it step by step once it once so that you uh, just uh, take it as a recipe and follow it whenever you deal with a linear system okay so the first step is simple figure out the matrix okay so when you have a set of equations figure out what the matrix is that is your step 1 step 2 figure out the eigen values and corresponding eigen vectors and then you pair wise just keep them uh, side by side so one eigen value and the corresponding eigen vector and the other eigen value and the corresponding eigen vector that is your step 2 step 3 draw the eigen vectors okay so you have to draw the length and the direction be a little bit cautious about that try to draw the eigen values uh, eigen vectors on your uh, xy plane okay try to place your eigen vectors properly in your xy plane next we will decide the arrow directions decide uh, the depending on the eigen values okay so if it is a positive eigen value then it is e to the power lambda t so it will exponentially blow so it will go away from that point and if we have a negative eigen value then it is going to come down and we will see that other different variant variants can also happen we will see some special cases today so we will draw the arrow directions depending on that and from there you will decide about the stability so this is a five step recipe of how to deal with any linear system that we face okay so now let us uh, take our pen and paper and deal with the first example of today okay so take your pen and paper and write down uh, this problem so let us consider that we have a system linear system described by Uh, this set of equations so th this is how a problem will come to you okay so let us consider that we have a linear system that is described by this set of equation dx dt is equal to y and dy dt is equal to minus 2x minus 3y okay so here you see that there is no component of uh, uh, x in, in in x itself but the equations are definitely coupled okay so now what is the question they are asking you to analyze the stability of the system with the vector field and typical phase trajectories so you have to draw that how the phase trajectories will move uh, how you start from any x0 y0 on your xy plane anywhere and how you will end up uh, at t tends to infinity and from there you have to analyze the stability of the system and they have also asked you to indicate the stable and unstable manifolds which i will point out later okay so this is the question is the question clear if the question is clear then let us just go and follow our recipe okay step by step so what was the first point of the recipe what is your matrix what is your, what is your matrix in this particular case 0 1 2 3 very good so write down the matrix so write down that a my matrix in this case is 0 1 2 3 very good okay So what is the next step? The next step is to figure out the eigen values and the eigen vectors. Okay, so let us take time. Let us take some time. Let us take two three minutes and tell me what are the eigen values of this system. You know how to figure out eigen values. So just take two three minutes and figure out what are the eigen values. let us calculate it and let us see that if we are finding similar values minus yes minus 1 minus 2 minus 1 minus 2 minus anyone else yeah fine minus 2 and minus 1 okay all of you got it what is the easiest way to check if it it is uh, correct or not sum them up and compare it with the sum of your trace the trace of your determinant okay so if that matches then most probably you have done right okay so um, okay i i uh, my eigen values are here 
Next step is corresponding eigen vectors. I'm sure you can do that. So uh, I'm leaving it to you. You will solve that and you will see that the corresponding eigen vectors will come something like this. So here one important thing about eigen vectors uh, that you, I guess you already know that here only the ratio of these two values basically matter. Okay. So here. Uh, if someone says that my eigenvector is 1 by root 2 and 1 by root 2 and someone says my eigenvector is 1 comma 1, they are basically talking about the same eigenvector, okay? Because that is that is basically giving us a direction. Only the ratio is that the important thing that matters, okay? So whenever you, uh, so, so you, you can uh, solve this problem using any uh, these tools like MATLAB, Mathematica, Python also you can uh, figure out there is just one line command of eigenvalue, eigenvector, and it will give you the eigenvalue and eigenvector of a matrix. But most importantly, there you will, you might have some fractional values or something like that, which will seem wrong because if you want to compare, sometimes it might seem wrong. But the only thing you need to focus on is the ratio of the, these two numbers. If that is same, you are basically talking about the same direction, okay? so. Okay, fine. So I have figured out the eigenvalue and eigenvectors and now I am going to pair it up. Pair it up means I will write down lambda 1 with V1 which is 1 comma 1 and lambda 2 that is minus 2 with V2 that is 1 comma minus 2. Okay, so this is my eigenvector and this is my eigenvalues pairwise. Now step 3 is to draw the eigenvectors. How can I draw the eigenvectors? You just go and find out these points on your XY plane and join those points with your origin. That, that gives you the direction, right? The vector pointing into the direction of that particular point. Okay. So that is the vector we are talking about. That is the direction we are talking about. So you can do it in your uh, pen and paper. You can use Excel for it. You can simply go and plot 0, 0 and 1, 1 and a, and a line join, join, draw a line joining them. Similarly, you can plot 0, 0 and 1, comma minus 2 and draw a line joining them and you will uh, find a graph like this. So this is something that I have drawn in Excel. Okay, you can see that one comma one I have placed here. I have uh, drawn a line to connect that. One comma minus two is here, and I have drawn a line to connect that. Okay, so these are my eigenvectors. I have drawn. I have figured out the direction. So directions means basically in general the entire line that spans in that direction. This entire line I am talking about. Okay, so this entire line is basically one eigen direction. The entire this entire line, this entire span is basically the other eigen direction. Okay, so this is my step three: draw your eigen vectors. Okay, so if I have my eigen vectors, I can draw them now. I have drawn it, and this this is the shape that I have. Next, next step was decide the arrows depending on your eigen values. Okay, so let us see. The first eigen value, first eigen vector was one comma one. This one. An eigen vector uh, value is minus one. So minus one means in what it, it should be a step. Yeah, it should be converging or diverging. Converging. Converging. Okay. So put your arrows in a converging direction. So from both sides of this line, from both sides of this line, the arrows should point into the origin okay so you draw your arrows you draw your arrows like this so if you have if you have negative exponentials so th just remember that this is going to sit on top of an exponential okay e to the power minus lambda t something like that will happen if you have a minus sign here if you have a plus sign here it will be e to the power plus lambda t so if it is minus then it is going to fall down, it will, the, the, whatever the perturbation is, it will come down and it will uh, just reach the center. On the other hand, if it is positive, then it is going, it is going to go into the other direction. So your arrows are uh, in this, this direction. Okay. So both the arrows, because both of them are negative in this particular example, they are going to come down and settle down on this uh, origin. Okay. So this is your step four. You have drawn the arrows. So once we draw the arrows, we already understand that this is a stable fixed point, right? It's a stable fixed point because all the trajectories from all the eigen directions are coming towards it. Okay. So what, what is going to be a trajectory if I start from here? What is going to be a trajectory if I start from here or here or here? All the trajectories are going to come 
and meet at the origin right because you have to follow the eigen direction so any way you go you have to follow the eigen direction to reach uh, the um, center but as we have drawn the curves in the last class you know that this time you have to see that which curve is moving faster and which curve is moving slower right which exponential is moving uh, decaying faster and according to that your curves will bend okay so i am not going into detail for that because we talked about that only entirely in the last class so i guess you understand that now what will happen if if for some matrix say these two values both these values were positive if both these values were positive then what will happen both the exponentials will grow right so your arrows will face the other way so in that case if i have uh, like uh, positive uh, eigen values if I, if i have plus 1 and minus uh, pl uh, plus 1 and plus 2 instead of this okay if i have plus 1 and plus 2 instead of minus 1 and minus 2 then you will have arrows which are diverging if you have arrows that are diverging a system that we have not encountered yet what do we call it we call it an unstable node okay just like the previous case all this previous uh, uh, example that we have seen uh, where is that yeah so all these examples were basically stable nodes right in this particular example you have seen that all these examples where we call them stable nodes similarly if the arrows are moving away then that i will call that an unstable node so if i have a system where all the arrows are moving away then all the trajectories from there is going to come out of the of of that origin and this point the central point is going to turn into a unstable fixed point okay so this is going to be an unstable fixed point or an unstable node we also have a name for that unstable node that we call a source okay so source and sink these are also two terminologies that we use for unstable and stable nodes source means when you have all the points coming out of it like a source okay uh, uh, like a light source all the points are coming all the trajectories are coming out of it if you have all the trajectories going into it you have a Uh, stable node and we call it a sink okay so this is our uh, first ex example and i guess you can uh, understand that how we are going to proceed if we have uh, a system like a linear system and how we are going to step by step take the problem and solve the problem so if you have a system like this where you have this uh, two uh, eigen vectors that you have drawn you will if someone ask you that which one is your slow eigen direction and which one is your fast eigen direction okay so slow eigen direction will be corresponding to the value which is where the mod lambda the value of lambda modulus of lambda is less that is your slow eigen direction and other one is your fast eigen direction these are just terminologies so i'm just explaining the terminologies depending on that your phase trajectory is bent and you can draw your phase and phase trajectories from there okay now let us there was another part of the question about stable and unstable manifolds okay so what are stable and unstable manifolds so if i have a line the eigen line eigen direction okay that line if is that particular line is a stable line that means all the trajectories through that line are coming towards a particular point then we call it a stable manifold okay and if the lines are moving away just like in this picture they are moving away from a particular point we call it an unstable manifold so why do we call it a manifold instead of calling it a line because this problem that we are solving is very much general generalizable to systems which are higher dimensional as well okay three uh, three variable four variable five variable systems also you can write like that linear systems you have a set of uh, uh, say five uh, differential equations which are all coupled and which are all linear in nature you can solve uh, them in a similar fashion okay you can solve that in a similar fashion but in that case these lines will not be straight lines right because in 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 the 5d space you have to draw a surface like thing so that we will call a manifold that is why in general we call it a stable or unstable manifold so a question might also come that find the equations for stable or unstable manifolds you can figure it out because you know the points through which it passes you can figure it figure out the equation for these directions these lines and that will give you the equations for stable and unstable manifolds so this was our a combination of uh, an an example that uh, 
guides you through the step by step process of figuring out the eigen values and eigen vectors and determining eigen directions slow fast eigen directions stable and unstable manifolds and drawing phase trajectories in uh, a linear system so let us move on to another problem so here also we have another linear system okay here uh, quickly we can uh, see that uh, let us just go very quickly through this example this is quite similar let us go very quickly through it what is the matrix 1 1 4 -2 right 1 1 4 minus 2 okay let us figure out the eigen value and eigen vector step 2 eigen value and eigen vector figuring out it minus 3 and 2 are the eigen values and eigen vectors okay then uh, what kind of a system do you expect from here if this is the eigen values and these are the eigen vectors can you tell me what kind of a system do you expect what kind of a stability we can expect here Is it going to be a stable point? No, ma'am. No. Why? Why? So one, one eigen value is negative. Uh, sorry, positive. One of them is positive, right? So both of them have to be negative if I want something stable. If I don't have uh, both of them uh, negative, then I don't have uh, anything stable. Okay. So if one uh, positive, one negative, then I I have what kind of a uh, thing I have? I have a saddle right saddle. so yes i have a saddle but this time other than the previous example the axis is not my uh, stable and unstable manifold but instead of that i have my uh, two eigen directions which can be represented as my stable and unstable manifold so here you again draw one comma one and one comma minus two the points okay and you draw them and you figure out uh, the two lines through which the saddle uh, gets created oh sorry i jumbled up uh, this is the these, this is the uh, equation right these are the uh, eigen values and eigen vectors so you draw 1 comma 1 and 1 comma minus 4 and you draw those two lines and you give the arrows so where you, in 1 comma minus 4 because it is minus 3 the arrows will be pointing inwards 1 comma 1 if it is because it is 2 they, they will be directed outwards and you will have uh, a saddle there okay so in case of a uh, saddle, we have one stable and one unstable manifold, okay? So you can write down the equations for both stable and unstable manifold from your eigenvectors only, okay? So the, here the origin is, an, uh, is a saddle point and stable manifold is the line spanned by the eigenvector V1 and similarly, unstable manifold is the line spanned by the eigenvector V2. Is it clear? Is it clear the idea of uh, stable and unstable manifolds? Okay. So now let us move on to talk about some special cases. All these uh, things I ha we have uh, discussed once, but let us uh, take it, it, it with some examples. If you deal with a matrix like this, 1, 1, 0, 1. Okay. So you can write down the equations, corresponding equations. Eigenvalues would be 1, 1. Okay. So the eigenvalues are equal and in that case they are all coming down in the same fashion that is the star. What if lambda is equal to 0? What if I have a matrix? What if I have a matrix where my lambdas are 0? Okay. What if my, my lambdas are 0? Then the whole plane, there is a whole plane filled with fixed points. Okay. You start anywhere. You just go right towards the x-axis and you dive into the x-axis because the entire x-axis behaves like a uh, series of fixed points sitting there. Okay, So this is a very special case where you have an entire plane filled with fixed points for lambda is equal to 0. So if you have lambda is equal to 0, then in that case, there is no uh, direction, uh, so no, uh, so to say, decay associated with it that particular di direction so that's why only one direction will dominate it will either fall uh, along x-axis or fall, uh, fall around y-axis okay so another possibility if i have only one eigen uh, value so to say so if i have only one value and correspondingly i have only one eigen vector so both of my eigen uh, values are identical if i have a scenario like that where both my eigen values are identical i have a matrix where both the eigen values are same then 
i get something which is a very special uh, stability that i see we call it a degenerate node so degeneracy you already know about degeneracy right so when when you have uh, two or three things which are identical to each other states identical to each other having identical energy or something like that so here also you have this identical directions for both uh, the um, both the uh, eigen values you have only single eigen value for representing both of them so in that case the fixed point becomes a degenerate node so what do i mean by that so you have only one line so this is the line this is the line okay this is the line say that i have for uh, representing my uh, eigen direction both the eigen directions are now the same okay so what happens uh, i always follow the eigen direction if i start from a certain point so if i start from here my eigen direction is pointing towards this direction so i move towards this direction okay i move towards this direction and then finally when i reach here the it, it is again pointing in the other direction so i turn and come back and meet at the fixed point that is lying here okay so this is a typical set of trajectories that you will see if my both my uh, lambda values are same and uh, from here you can extrapolate and draw try to draw a special case where the, both the lambda values are uh, quite close to each other the lambda uh, that both the eigen vectors are almost similar so let us consider a scenario where uh, the two eigen vectors are the two eigen vectors let me just try to draw them so say this one is one eigen vector and this one is another eigen vector okay so this is my xy plane this is my xy plane and both the eigen vectors are just like this okay they are very close to each other they are almost uh, equal the eigen values are almost equal and the eigen vectors are almost identical pointing in almost similar directions uh, say both of them are stable manifolds okay so both of them are stable manifolds then try to draw uh, the trajectories in this scenario okay what happens if uh, both of them are not uh, uh, stable but one of them is unstable and another other one is stable then what kind of a set of trajectories do i have okay this way you can uh, explore different kind of possible dynamics that we can have in a in a system like uh, this okay so degenerate node is another uh, example that uh, that another phenomena that can happen now finally let us quickly talk about complex eigen values so we our equations the trajectories are dominated by a factor like e to the power lambda t if lambda becomes complex then i have a system like e to the power a plus ib times t right so e to the power at plus e to the power into e to the power uh, ib t so what is e to the power ib t e to the power i omega t like something like that right so it is always associated with oscillatory functions like cos and sin and so to say right and what is e to the power at this is similar to exponentials uh, that we had previously it is either exponentially growing or exponentially decaying depending on a is positive or uh, negative so if i have a function e to the power at into e to the power ibt what kind of a dynamics do you expect intuitively speaking what do you expect oscillatory dynamics oscillatory dynamics but what is the contribution of e to the power at here the the exponential term here when it will glow spirally outward something very good so it is either going to be grow spirally grow or spirally decay right depending on a is positive or negative very good so that is what we see in case of complex eigen values so if a is greater than 0 we have exponentially decaying oscillations that is quite similar to the oscillators uh, the normal natural oscillators that we see right if you have a simple pendulum you uh, apply some force it starts to oscillate then it continuously decays down and stops okay that kind of a dynamics would be governed by an equation e to the power at where a is positive that is kind of an amplitude and e to the power ibt that is representing the oscillation similarly a greater than 0 will represent an exponentially growing oscillation so spirals which are growing and a is equal to 0 are sustained oscillations neutrally stable so oscillation something entirely new that we have not seen in uh, 1d systems comes and plays its role in a simple 2d linear system so uh, let us just uh, define these Uh, quantities also this this uh, dynamical quantities also so the first one where a is less than 0 we call it a stable spiral 
okay so stable spiral signifies that your amplitude is consta constantly decaying so once you start going into it you are not being able to meet where you started okay your amplitude is constantly decaying you started from here but you are not being able to come and join the point uh, at this point ag again because your amplitude has decayed a little bit so you go on twist uh, rounding up to a certain uh, around a certain point unless until you go and fall on that particular point okay so this is also a fixed point kind of a dynamics this is also something stable this is also an attractor right like fixed point this is also an attractor but the way it is attracting the trajectories towards itself is really interesting and it go, it gives rise to stable spirals a less than 0 similarly a greater than 0 is unstable spiral so it constantly it is throwing out the trajectories from it but in a rotatory fashion it is rotating and it is coming out it is rotating and it is coming out and it is throwing out all the trajectories from that point so this particular point the origin uh, denoted by a uh, denoted by this circle is is basically an unstable spiral and this is very very important it's called center okay center is sustained neutrally stable oscillations so that means there is this this entire term is zero so the here you have e to the power uh, zero t so this is just one and you have a sustained only oscillatory part okay but the this entire set of trajectories are completely independent of each other that means that if i choose any point on this xy plane then there is a own trajectory there is one own trajectory that is not overlapping with any other trajectory line there okay not dependent on anyone else okay so this is center sustained neutrally stable oscillations okay so uh, these are three more things that we get here in in uh, linear systems so combining uh, this is this is one example of uh, figuring out with uh, with eigenvalues and eigenvectors which are complex you can uh, try to uh, draw them you can see that how it happens so one question i am leaving it to you as a homework that try to figure out this direction okay so if i have a stable spiral or an unstable spiral then the rotations can be both in clockwise or anti clockwise direction that means the stable spiral can come down like this or it is also it is also possible that it comes down in the other way it comes down to this point only but from the other direction uh, in a in a clockwise or a counter clockwise direction how do we figure out the direction how do we know that it is coming down uh, in in clockwise direction or uh, counter clockwise direction think about it you can it, you can do that i believe uh, just by drawing a, a couple of vectors you will be able to understand that try to do that if you are not being able to do that then we will discuss that in tomorrow's class so uh, try to figure out the direction of the rotation okay so depending all these different types of uh, curves that we can get trajectories that we can give we have a beautiful diagram which is called the poincare diagram of classification of linear systems okay what is this this is basically a plane this is drawn on a plane where uh, to begin with i have chosen determinant of a delta and trace as my uh, parameters defining the uh, defining the uh, eigen values right so why that because of this diagram drawing it becomes so easy if i um, just draw this on the trace versus determinant of a plane so x axis is trace a this is y axis is determinant a so if you see that these were uh, my uh, t square minus 4 delta is the term that de uh, de decides that they are going to be complex or not okay and uh, if i draw this gra graph this particular graph okay determinant a is equal to one fourth of trace square so i am drawing this graph and how, this is going to be a parabola like graph like, because there is a square right so this is going to be a parabola like graph so this line basically uh, signifies different different regimes different regimes in which i can get different kind of uh, dynamics okay i can get a, a spiral sink here i can get a spiral source here depending on my uh, trace is positive or negative okay similarly i can get a source uh, where everything is coming into it in here and here i, I get a sink where in, in everything is coming down as a stable point here depending on my determinant of a is positive or negative okay this line gives me centers 
because here my trace is zero. Okay, and this line gives me the degenerate sources and sinks. So this side is degenerate sources. This side is degenerate sinks. Below this line here on uh, on the other side where the determinant becomes negative. Okay, the trace could have any value, but the determinant is negative. In that case, I start getting the cycles. So try to have a look uh, at this diagram. Try to uh, convince yourself about the different portions, different regimes of this diagram, and uh, try to figure out that what what are the, uh, the rules that you can uh, decide for your own to deal with a linear system. So this is uh, kind of uh, the point where I will stop. So prepare, I, I suggest you to prepare a table for yourself uh, to deal with linear system, a rule table, where you can figure out the tragic nature of trajectories uh, quickly, okay? And uh, one more thing is that I need you to make some groups for you, our uh, next assessment. So as you have suggested that uh, the next assessment should be, uh, we should give some time for that. So uh, I need groups of two. Okay, two of two of you should uh, make one group. So uh, that kind of a groups I need. So um, can I get the list by today that uh, who will be in which groups? Because this assessment is going to be based on linear systems. Hello. Yes, ma'am. Yes. So, uh, can you please make uh, groups among yourselves? Uh, yes, ma'am. Uh, uh, how many of you are here total? Uh, ten, uh, ten or twelve, na? Thirteen. Thirteen. Okay. Thirteen. Then one group will have three people. Okay. So, um, so please make uh, these groups and let me know, okay, that who will be in which group because uh, the next assignment I am going to give one week time.